Well, everyone, we are here with the extremely talented Jonathan Ogden. Thank you so much for coming on and talking with us today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. For those of you who don't know, Jonathan is a talented musician and vocal artist, but I'll let you introduce yourself, Jonathan. How would you introduce yourself to sure. people? Yeah, um, I am a British Christian musician, artist, worship leader, <laughs> all of those combined. So um, yeah, I just make music here in the UK and put stuff out online on YouTube and um, write songs, make music, do all of that. So. <laughs> And when did you know that you were going to become all of those things in one? Yeah, good question. I think I've always loved music. So I grew up in a very musical family, um, just surrounded by lots of musical influences growing up. And I'm the youngest of seven kids. So it's a big family. We had like one of my brothers played jazz piano. Another one was a DJ. Another one was like a worship leader. So there was like just a lot of different styles going on. And I always loved that. And then... I'm also a pastor's kid, so my dad was uh, leading the church I grew up at. And yeah, I'd say I was maybe 16, 17, um, where I really just started to pray and ask God, okay, what? how do I like serve you in church and ministry and all of that? And yeah, I just always loved it, always felt a passion for it. And um, yeah, ended up leading worship at my little church. And then that became songwriting as well and spanned into a whole musical career. So, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Do you remember the first song that you wrote? Oh, I wrote some pretty bad ones. <laughs> um, I actually made some comedy songs when I was growing up as a kid. <laughs> of course. And then, uh, started to write more serious ones. But um, yeah, I think the first song I wrote, I remember it had about three lines that just repeat over and over. And that was the whole song. So <laughs> That's all you need. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> we are talking a lot about worship this month. What is your earliest memory of worship? I know you grew up around the church a lot, so I imagine mm -hmm. it would be pretty early on. Yeah. No, I remember being like really young child and like growing up in church. And I used to like crawl underneath all the chairs in church, <laughs> like try to make a maze going through all the rows and just like being in that environment of hearing worship music, I guess. And then I think it probably took me till I was maybe like 12, 13 um, to that point where I was like, okay. I actually want to engage in this now and like sing these words and express worship this way. And so, yeah, it was kind of just a process of feeling like I'm joining in and being a part of it. So. Now, when I was 12 and 13, I was super insecure about my voice. Still am. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what would you say to someone who is probably in that age range who feels like super uncomfortable about like singing around other people or even in front of other people? Mm hmm. I mean, don't tell anyone, but I'm still a bit insecure about my voice. <laughs> but I genuinely, I didn't sing in front of anybody until the first time I had to lead worship when I was about 17. And nobody had ever heard me sing because I was really shy. I was just the kid that wanted to be at the back of the room, like as far away from the front as possible. And uh, yeah, trying to just having to sing in front of people and be on a stage and do all of that was terrifying to me. And so um I remember leading worship just for a little prayer meeting originally, which was about eight people there. And I was shaking the whole time <laughs> and I was so scared, but it's been a process of like years really just kind of keep throwing myself in that situation and learning to get over that fear of what people might think about me. And um, especially with worship, like the aim is just to worship Jesus and help people engage with that. And so it's really not a performance of like, who's the best singer. It's just how we can engage and, allow people to all sing together and feel comfortable to do that. So, um, yeah, it was a process of getting over myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's tough to do. Um, I, I recently had a friend of mine, um, who also leads worship and he was talking about how the Bible talks about desiring worship for us and each of us bringing our own voice being, part of it. Like God doesn't want mm. us to sound like other people. And that's what we, oftentimes do is like well we oh, yeah. i can't i can't sound like a soprano so i guess i can't sing but mm. how um unique everyone's voice is to just 
uh, and how that can lend itself to worship. And mm. uh, that was the first yeah. time I had that understanding of it. Yeah. No, I think we're all created uniquely and like we all have the ability to worship in the way that we can, which doesn't have to be like somebody else sounds or yeah. And that was, I guess, some of my fear growing up was like, I don't know if I can sound like other people sound or how worship is supposed to sound in my mind, but um, yeah. Realizing that God created me with a unique voice and like he enjoys to hear me sing and worship in my way. And so just learning to be more comfortable with that. <laughs> If someone were to just take one small step to become more comfortable with doing that, what mm. would you suggest? I'd say just practicing. Like for the first year almost of doing it, I would just sing at home on my own, just get a little hymn book out and start singing some songs and just getting used to at least doing that. And then just taking small steps to like try it in a small environment, maybe with a small group. And then the fear of doing something doesn't always mean we're not supposed to be doing it. It's sometimes just an obstacle to overcome and even though I was afraid of singing in front of people I knew that that was something God wanted me to do was to like lead worship and do that so um I just kept throwing myself in the deep end and <laughs> making myself conquer that fear to get over it but yeah that's incredible I'm glad you did it because your music is awesome <laughs> when I say the phrase bringing your best to worship what comes to mind mm. I think bringing your best is about just really bringing your authenticity like who you are and um, your own natural expression of worship. Like for me, worship in its most simple definition is just responding to God. It's like we see something of who God is and something in us responds. I sometimes say it's a bit like on YouTube, they have those compilations called like try not to laugh challenge. And if you've seen those, <laughs> but yes. it's that thing of like where we see something funny, our natural response is to laugh. And so I think when we see God and we see, his glory and beauty, like our natural response as a human is to worship. And so it's really just starts with seeing him. And then the way we respond is like our authentic response of worship. And so I think the more we don't overthink how we respond and don't try and complicate it with, does it have to sound this way or do I have to use these words? But like bringing my best in worship is really just how I naturally authentically respond to God and like coming to him that way. And that might be singing, it might be dancing, it might be poetry or making a film or, you know, it can look so many different ways, but um, just responding to who God is, I think is natural worship. <laughs> That's so well said. You know, our church talks a lot about having um, an attitude of worship and mm. um, kind of it, like, it not even being about the um, vocality of it, but it's just like um, where your heart is. Um, mm. So how would you describe um, having like a heart of worship? Mm. Yeah, I think the heart of worship, it can really be kind of all of life. Um, <laughs> mm. I guess even in church, like we always describe it as like the worship time, right? It's like the, the time where we sing the songs and we do that. But um, really like everything can be an act of worship if it's the way we're responding to God. And so I love to worship with song as a musician. Like that's one of my favorite ways to do it for sure. But um, I also just see it being more of what's going on inside and how we feel and that I'm taking time to like see who God is and then allow myself to respond to that in some way, which can, yeah, be so many different things that don't just have to happen on Sunday mornings. It can be all of life. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. I love that so much. How can you jump for joy in worship if you're not a great singer or that's not how you usually celebrate a lot of our students will be like, Oh, well, that's just not for me. And they feel like either they can't or that they won't, or that like, that is just something that they don't feel authentic in doing. What mm. do you have to say to them? Yeah, I feel that. I think uh, I'm definitely the more like shy introvert guy. So <laughs> sometimes it's Sunday morning and we're jumping for joy and I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready, <laughs> but I think it's, uh, sometimes like our emotions follow like what our body does sometimes. And it's almost like the stirring up of ourself can be a good thing to like, um, it's almost like telling your soul, like there's a, that phrase we use of like, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Right. It's like you're speaking to your own soul to like worship and praise God. And so sometimes I don't feel that, but it's that moment of like, actually can I like stir myself up now to be like, come on soul, like praise God. Mm -hmm. um, 
and that might be doing something that's a little uncomfortable or like jumping around when I don't feel like it. Um, but I think, you know, the Bible talks about making a joyful noise to the Lord as well. And like, that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a great vocal performance. <laughs> a noise is quite a broad category. So um, I think any way that we can just like honestly respond, like we don't want to hold ourselves back by worrying about what other people think about how we're going to respond. Like if it's, I'm not joining in because I'm scared my friends are going to judge me or something, then um, I think that would be a shame. But if it's something I genuinely want to do and is authentic, then I want to feel free to do that and express that way. So my friend Jamie can sing very well. And I oftentimes uh -huh. find myself being like super intimidated, um, mm -hmm. just even singing around her. Um, <laughs> but I also try to like do that thing because like even in that situation i try to remind myself of like okay yeah like worship isn't about like singing as good as my friend it's about sure. like focusing on like responding to god and i think mm. that that's a good reminder <laughs> that's so true yeah i think god just loves to hear our voice whatever it sounds like <laughs> and uh yeah we just go for it <laughs> The focus of our episode is this verse. Uh, it's Psalms 28, 6 through 7. Praise be the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my, and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song, mm -hmm. I praise him. How do you see that being lived out? I think it's, again, I would say that category of like, with my song can be really broad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um some days it's literally a song and some days it's a different expression. But I think the more, I guess, years I've been alive, <laughs> the more I've seen that like God really is someone we can trust and um, seen him be that hope and strength of life. And so I think that's somewhere we can find a lot of strength and just joy and encouragement in life. And I love this verse from the Psalms and just the Psalms as a whole that, a lot of the times where I'm going through something that's difficult or just like, you know, struggling with all different areas of life, like I'm opening the Psalms and just looking at the way David would express his worship and express how trustworthy God is. And then it leads to this like response of praise and song. And so, yeah, sometimes we just need to remind ourselves of like who God is and that he's good and he's faithful and he's trustworthy. And um, that's why I love this verse is like, it's a reminder of, what God is like and who he is, but then this way that we can also respond and say like, because he's faithful, because he's my strength, I'm going to be able to sing and give my song to him as well. And so, yeah, I think it's just always good to remind ourselves of that truth and rest in it. So for me, one of my first engagements with worship was just like, okay, so worship is that thing that you do at church. Um, yeah. But then I saw it as just like, oh, well, worship is that thing you do when you feel good. Uh, mm -hmm. But Lately, I've known that like worship is something that you can also engage with when you don't feel good. Yeah, that's true. And I think even just surrounding yourself in the environment of worship could be really helpful. That I think that's one thing about worship is it kind of provokes other people to want to worship too. And like mm -hmm. when I guess that's reading the Psalms, you're seeing David's worship and sometimes reading the way he praises God makes you want to praise God too. And you get to join in with that. But yeah, some days... I might not have the words or I might not even feel in a place where I'm ready to like jump for joy, but I put myself in that environment of worship and maybe it is in church singing or um, through reading or through community and um, hearing other people's worship like provokes me and encourages me to like, yeah, I can sing this. I can join in. And so um, that's why it's good to do it with others. I think. <laughs> How do you think um, someone can, put their whole self into worship. Mm. Yeah. I think it really starts with just seeing more of who God is. Um, mm. And like I say, and like worship is responding to God. And so the more we see God, the more we want to worship. And so sometimes you might think, Oh, I can't seem to get as involved as the people around me seem to be. And why am I not expressing the way they are? But the more I just think about, okay, what's this song actually saying? Like maybe it's singing about God's goodness and I try and just like really think about how good God is. And then something in me wants to respond to that. And so, yeah, it's really trying to sometimes tune out all the distractions of even how other people are worshiping. <laughs> um, 
I'd just be like, okay, let me just get in that zone where I can really think about who Jesus is and like even think about ways that he's been good in my life or um, however we can apply that and make it personal. And then something in us just wants to respond. And so, yeah. And just be free to like express how you want to express and not worry about the judgment of what will people think if I do this. <laughs> I, I appreciate the encouragement to like make it super personal because I think that that's mm what it's all about it's not like just because we're with a group of people doesn't mean that it has to sound just like everyone else Mm -hmm. yeah definitely well thank you jonathan for Mm -hmm. joining us thank you for all of the incredible music that you put out into the world um and thank you for answering god's call for worship i'm i'm glad that you have taken on the brave act of worshiping in public (laughs) and um and leading and I'm just really grateful for it, and uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Ricky. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure.